Yeah, no. The NFL schedule release is a lot like when Colton Underwood, The Bachelor, came out. A shocking amount of talk devoted to something everybody already knew. Welcome back to Odd Man Sports, here on the game day. I'm your host, Brandon Perna. I'm also the host of That's Good Sports, so subscribe to both channels as a favor to me. And to piss off my mom, who said I'd never, ever in a million years have two sports shows. <gasps> That's why you have bunions, mom. That's why you have bunions. On today's episode, we'll give Jimmy G a break, we'll give Tebow a hard time, and we'll give Zach Wilson insight into the one skill he needs to master before owning New York. Dinks and dunks. On Sunday, Seahawks receiver DK Metcalf impressed the football world, posting an insane 10.3 second finish in his 100 meter dash debut. Also insane, in photos after the race, how much bigger DK looked next to regular sized people. It was a wide angle lens. In MLB news, Mets teammates Jeff McNeil and Francisco Lindor apparently had an argument in the dugout, which they claimed was over a half rat, half raccoon spotted in the clubhouse. The rat-coon story was picked up by every major media outlet, and yet no one picked up on the fact that we took a page out of Jimmy Fallon's playbook asking McNeil to drop in one specific phrase as many times as possible into an interview to see if anyone noticed. I mean, it was awesome. Uh, you know, love playing with the guy. You know, he came up with, uh, you know, a huge hit there to, you know, help us, uh, you know, get that insurance run. But, um, you know, it's fantastic playing with him. Um, you know, I hope to do so for a long time. You know, you know, he's going to be here for, uh, you know, a while. So, uh, you know, hopefully I can do the same. And, you know, we can have a, uh, you know, great up the middle uh, combo for, uh, you know, years to come. Warriors guard Damon Lee claimed to have been one of 6,000 people out of 8 million to have contracted COVID despite having received the vaccine. And frankly, I'm a little skeptical after hearing Lee's symptoms. Loss of appetite, even you know, random headaches, uh, like brain fog where like, you know, I'll start a conversation and be in on the conversation, then like five minutes in, I'd either just lose track of what I was talking about or just don't want to talk. Now, I'm no doctor, but losing your sense of taste is a sign you have COVID. Losing track of a conversation after five minutes and wanting to bail, that, my friend, that's called life. It felt like I was like, hit by a car, hit like hit by two cars at once, every step I took. Uh, per Dr. Fauci, COVID feels like you have been hit by at least three cars and no less. Unless it's a mid-sized sedan and a diesel truck, then that counts as three. And speaking of people who aren't doctors, here's Lee's teammate, Andrew Wiggins, on whether he would get the vaccine. I don't really see myself um, getting it anytime soon, unless I'm forced to somehow. <laughs> If hesitant NBA players are open to getting forced vaccines, I think we have only one option. The winner of the 2021 Kentucky Derby was Aaron Rodgers for wearing a Turd Ferguson name tag, a reference to the name uh, Burt Reynolds gave his character on SNL's Celebrity Jeopardy back when SNL was, of course, funny and relevant. But... The official winner of this year's derby was a three-year-old colt named Medina Spirit, which I thought was a Tyler Perry Halloween special. Sadly, he's just a horse who, after winning the biggest race on Earth, just tested positive for an illegal steroid. The horse's trainer, Bob Baffert, went on Fox News and explained the reason behind the disqualification, saying this. We live in a different world now. This this America is different. And uh, this it was like a cancel culture kind of a, a thing. Uh, call me crazy, but I actually believe Baffert, as this isn't the first time the PC mob has come for his horse. So without further ado, 
Here are the top five reasons Medina Spirit has been canceled. The number five reason, constantly having his giant penis out at the workplace. Number four, said tennis legend Steffi Graf as a horse face, then tried to argue that it was a compliment. Number three, in 1998, went to a Halloween party dressed as a zebra. Number two, claim that in certain circumstances, nay can actually mean yes. And the number one reason Medina Spirit got canceled, he refused to race in the famous Italian Palio de Siena because of what those quote, Italian dirty scumbags did to his great great grandfather. On Sunday, Luka Doncic of the Mavericks was ejected for this crotch punch on Cavaliers point guard Colin Sexton. Doncic joins Jamal Murray and Marcus Smart as part of a disturbing recent trend of players getting revenge by delivering cheap shots to the groin. And when I say disturbing, I mean more for the guy delivering the blow because the pain lasts maybe 10 minutes. But the memory of feeling his Johnson on your forearm, well, that lasts a lifetime. Money talks. Now, Kyle Shanahan got a lot of shit for not committing to the notion that Jimmy Garoppolo would still be on the planet in a week. But it's his statements regarding Jimmy G's relationship with Trey Lance, which I find way more perplexing. I want Jimmy to be here and I want this kid to be brought along. I mean, I get why the 49ers want Jimmy G to pass along everything he's learned from his time working with Brady and Belichick and Shanahan, but what's Garoppolo's incentive to train the player who was brought in to take his job and his money? Here's a Brett Favre who was in a similar situation with the young Aaron Rodgers on the arrangement between a veteran and a rookie quarterback. I don't know where the, the, the present starter, like myself in that case, um, is, is paid to be a mentor, so to speak, or if that's part of the job. And while Favre has made a habit of putting his Wrangler boots in his mouth recently, I completely agree with him here. And I would go even further than Favre. Not only should Garoppolo not help Trey Lance, he should go out of his way to sabotage the kid. He should tell him all of the wrong reads and all of the wrong receiver preferences and that George Kittle is a blocking tight end only. But the guy who I fear is going to get the worst of this? Mac Jones, the Alabama product is walking into a room with two Auburn alums and Cam Newton and Jarrett Stidham, who are both on the verge of being out of the NFL for good. Same goes for Andy Dalton in Chicago. The difference between QB1 and QB2 is the difference between being a boss and being a punchline. So let's not expect athletes to be more magnanimous than we would be, especially when some snot-nosed 21-year-old is trying to steal their job and relegate them to holding a clipboard. Which is actually a much better job to have. Odd man out. Well, it happened. Tim Tebow is one-upping the son of God and resurrecting his pro sports career for a second time. The second coming of Tebow. The quarterback turned left fielder turned tight end is expected to sign a one-year deal with the Jacksonville Jaguars as they attempt a player version of the Jack Easterby experiment. And as someone who had to root for Tim Tebow when he played for the Denver Broncos, let me tell you this, Jags fans, it was a lot of fun, but it wasn't always easy like masturbating after drinking five whiskeys. Now the only benefit of Tebow's attempt to give up football and play baseball, we finally have definitive proof God still hates the Mets. Religious people, you're telling me there's a big guy in the sky that formed the mountains in a day, but he couldn't get Tebow a single at bat with the Mets? I'm not buying it. Tebow, of course, is being signed to mentor Trevor Lawrence and to be a positive locker room influence. And I don't mean positive like the Warriors locker room. 
Basically, the same role he had at Florida, with one teeny tiny difference. In Gainesville, Tebow was maybe the greatest college player of all time. In Jacksonville, after eight years away from the game at a position he's never played, he'll maybe be the worst pro football tight end of all time. Don't believe me? Here's Tebow's one attempt to catch a pass, which happened over 3,000 days ago. We've been talking to Mark Sanchez about throwing you the ball. Watch. Get your head around quicker. On the positive side, Tebow returns to the NFL with one new notch on his belt. The world's most eligible bachelors is eligible no more. Gator great Tim Tebow is engaged. That's right. After 32 years on planet Earth, Tim Tebow had sex. Probably. As for who takes the chastity belt from Tebow? It was day one of the Zach Wilson era here at the Jets facilities in Florham Park, New Jersey, as the new franchise quarterback put on that green helmet for the first time. That's right. Z for Zachariah Wilson participated in his first Jets practice. And with the lenses of the New York media trained on him, it was hard to miss the black band on his left index finger. That, boys and girls, is a promise ring, a purity ring, confirmation that the next Jets QB has more in common with Steve Carell than Joe Namath. But if we're talking about chest hair, then Steve Carell has more in common with Joe Namath than Zach Wilson ever will. Now asked about the ring, this week after practice, the Mormon QB explained, I'm married to the game. Sure you are, kid. And I respond to comments on my YouTube videos because I enjoy the engagement with my subscribers. I'll be in the comments after this video, guys. <laughs> Regarding his faith, though, Wilson told a Utah newspaper that while he wasn't a regular churchgoer, my family and I hold the same moral values that the church does. Of course, one of the main tenets of Mormonism is no premarital vaginal sex. Though there is a little thing called soaking, look it up, but no traditional sex means there's a good chance Wilson will be continuing in the Grand Jets tradition of butt fumbling. Well, thank you, Zach. Uh, next week, I'll be breaking down the all two and telling you everything that you did wrong. That's it for today. See you guys next week once we have more sexy photoshops of the Jags two first round QBs.